Hello friends, Laura from CoolMommyCollected.com. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my Kinderleben student's math basket. Now remember, a Kinderleben student is any student under the age of six. They're not doing any formal lessons, but you will want to introduce them to certain activities and certain non-formal lesson type learning so that they can get ready for things like math, things like reading, and more. I have a video about my Kinderleben plans right here. Here, I have a video of my Kinderleben literacy basket for things like storytelling, writing preparation, reading preparation, all of those great things. But today's video is my math basket. You don't have to buy items from the store for things you probably already have at home, especially if you're a homeschooling mom. So I'm gonna bring you guys over to my table over there and show you everything I found in my home that is gonna be at one point in my child's math basket. I'm going to link all these things in my Amazon storefront that I will link down below. But remember, the whole point of this video is to inspire you guys that you likely have exactly what you need for your math basket right in your own home. So I hope you guys check it out and let's get right into it. But first, don't forget to subscribe because I want new friends and I am gaining a lot of wisdom and knowledge from your experiences as a homeschool mom. So don't think that this is just a one way street. I like getting info from you too. So thank you guys for being here and I cannot wait to just keep growing together in our homeschool journeys. Let's get started. So as you can see, we have a whole lot of goodies here that could work perfectly in your math basket, and I bet you have them at home. But remember, it's not like you need a ginormous laundry basket size basket for all this stuff. You could just do what I do and sort of make notes of everything you want to utilize throughout the year, and then you can put the basket together weekly as you see fit. One good thing to, to talk about is puzzles. Uh, these are Melissa and Doug wooden puzzles. And what I love about this is your child can not just see the shapes, but they can hold them, they can feel them, you can talk about them. <laughs> Oops. You can talk about how many points does a triangle have, and you can count them with your child. They can hold the circle, and they can you know, feel that there's no points in a circle. There's just so much versatility that you can do with these puzzles. You can say, hand me the square, and then, you know, they can pass it to you. Pass me the shape that has five points. So there's, there's a lot of versatility that you can do with puzzles, which is why I like them so much. Obviously, over here, they're getting to, again, feel the puzzle. You can lay out all these numbers on the floor and say, hand me the two. You can go through them with your child each and put them down and count them together. Zero, one, pretend they're all out and then you put them in. Two, three, four, and you can just go through, hand me the six. There's just, like I said, a lot of versatility. So I really love the Melissa and Doug wooden puzzles. Another thing that we can do is print out the numbers. So you can lay out. I actually did this because I do Simply Charlotte Mason arithmetic. They do recommend that you print out numbers 1 to 10, I believe, is you print out the numbers where maybe there's two sets of each, and you can ask your child as you're going over numbers with them, can you hand me all the ones? And you know, they'll have to look and see where all the ones are, and they'll hand it to you. Or you can say, can you give me the three, and they'll just hand you one three. This was as simple, guys, as finding a free PDF on Pinterest, printing it out, cutting it out, and then laminating it. So anybody can get that done, and that can help your children get familiar with the numbers. Now, something you can even get from the Dollar Tree if you don't have it, very, very simple, is just number cards. I like to do this with the ABCs, and I like to do this with numbers, where I'll just quickly go through and have the kids repeat after me daily. So I'll be like, one, they repeat one, two, they repeat two, three, they repeat three, and this is as I'm just moving along and they're just seeing the numbers go through and through. So having these physical things is wonderful for getting them to know their numbers. Another physical thing that's great to have is change. Now I know if you're like a freaked out of uh, germs kind of mom, then this could be a little gross to you, have your kids just handling money, but since you can even utilize these cards and say you could even turn these cards over. Again, guys, this is just ideas I'm thinking of that show how much you can do with this. Say the kid turns over the card, five. Okay, count out five pennies. One, two, three, four. And you could do this with them, guys. This math basket isn't intended to be a test. If they can do things independently, you can certainly have them do it, but it's really to give you something to do with your child that's gonna allow you to bond with them as you're giving them a love for learning. So 
don't be like discouraged or feel like, oh, my kid can't do this on them on their own. Remember, this is not formal lessons. This is just fun ways that you can start to foster that love. So you can also see we got the number nine there. You can also utilize something like a, a abacus. You can utilize something like this and now tell them, okay, let's count nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So again, I'm kind of just thinking on my head here, but that would be a great game. And that's a totally awesome thing that they can do. And abacus really comes in handy and you can probably thrift one if you tried. You guys, anything that I share here, if you're like, ooh, I have another idea of what we can do, please let me know in the comments below. I think that that is just super fun when everybody shares all of their experience and all of their ideas. It just makes us all better homeschool moms, so let's do it. Another thing that's great is books. Now, I'm sure that there's a bunch of twaddle books that have numbers one to 10, and guys, I'm sure you can use those too. I really do my best to try to do classics because just feels like you're setting the foundation of beautiful literature at the beginning. You know, don't feel bad if you need to get these from the library, you know? A lot of the really amazing Charlotte Mason type books that I've gotten for my kids have been from the library. And because I'm getting them from the library instead of buying them, I've been able to expose them to so much more. So don't feel like you need to buy in order to do this right. You can totally get from the library. Um, the Very Hungry Caterpillar, I just noticed I had. Uh, these are mine. But it's great. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple. The kids can count one. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears. So what's cool is not only can you count with your child through this book, but they're also learning the days of the week, which I think are sometimes a little hard to remember for children. So that's a great book to read. I was also gifted this for my one-year-old recently, and this is just another beautiful book. You can tell these are living books because the illustration is just beautiful, the writing is very clear, there's not a lot of overstimulation, and um, I like how it says, one is one duckling swimming in a dish, two is two sisters making a wish. So as you're reading, you could tell your kid, two, can we count? One, two. Um, again, never think that there's just one way to use all the items that you're seeing today or all items in general. There's always more than one way. And when you find those ways, it gets really fun because then you don't feel like you need so much. You realize I can use this and get like five uses out of it to teach the same thing. Cards. Cards are wonderful. Guys, there are so many games that you can play with cards. I've been playing war with my four-year-old and it has been so fun because not only is he learning numbers, but he's learning which number is greater, which number is smaller. So I think games like war, goldfish, when you're asking, you're asking, do you have any twos? Do you have any three? Or even games like Uno, which my sister gave me this. They're waterproof. How cool is that? I have yet to play this with them, but I need to, which is why I'm glad I got this together. Uno is another great way to have fun with your kids in a non-formal lesson, but teach them their numbers. So Uno is great. This is a really fun game. I also showed it in my literacy video. If this was an M, it would connect with monkey. So that's great for the My Literacy Basket if you watch that video. But it also contains things like this where it'll have the number five but then five dots and your child can connect it and kind of count it and understand that this is five and this is five. Likewise, I also have this game, which again, I'm sorry, I lost the box, but I will find it and link it in my Amazon storefront. This game is really cool because as you pull out these different cards, they also work as a puzzle. So two minus one is one, and only the correct answer will fit perfectly in the puzzle, so that's really fun. As you can see, these are some other examples just to show you what that's like. I also want to talk about the importance of counting. We can start counting by counting anything in your house, guys. I have buttons here. Not only can you count them, but you can absolutely have them start sorting them. You can mix them all up and say, put the yellow with the yellow, put the purple with the purple, the white with the white. You can even do it by size. Put all the big buttons here, all the medium buttons here, all the small buttons there. You can also do a little matching game maybe where you lay out a certain pattern and they have to replicate that pattern or maybe uh, you could do matching, which this is a great time to talk about a muffin tin. Guys, I need a new muffin tin. But what's cool 
is there are these fancy things. They're called 10 frames. They're beautiful. They're wooden. But I've seen them in these really beautiful Charlotte Mason videos. They're these wooden 10 frames. And let's see, one, two, three. Well, we don't have 10 here. I think we have 12. You, you can basically utilize these, whether you're making patterns or you're matching. For instance, I could put one purple button in each row here and then one yellow button here and then one white here and then tell them, put all the rest, like match them. Put all the yellow with the yellow. Put all the purple with the purple. This is another thing that is so simple. You don't have to get a 10 frame. You could just use your pretty disgusting needs to be replaced muffin tin. Yikes, like this is bad. You know, again, I was just thinking if you were to sort of like put random numbers on each, then you can tell your child put as many buttons as there. And again, you're doing this with them, you know? How many buttons do we need to put? Three. Okay, let's put it. One, two, three. Yay, we did it. Okay. I was gifted this, and it has been so amazing. I'm very, I'm very annoyingly missing one of these pieces, so I need to find it. But basically, it's a two-player game, and there's three different ways that you can play. So I'm gonna model this for you just so you get an idea. Say there's two players. One player has the purple dice, one player has the five. So as they roll the dice, they take that many numbers and they put it on their little spool here. And then the first one to the top wins. There's another two player game, for example, where everybody rolls and then this row belongs to this person, that row belongs to that person. And so if you roll a one, you get to take your one. If you roll a one again, you already took it, so you miss that turn. But as you keep rolling, the goal is to be able to grab the amount of, uh, the amount of, the amount of circles until you get your entire row here and then you win. So if you're interested in this game, that's just some of the ways that you can play. And again, you're feeling, you're touching, you're learning. It's great. I think this is a good age too, to kind of give them a physical clock. One, it's one o'clock, it's two o'clock, three o'clock. You know, you can kind of just start to give them that foundation for telling time. That's something you can also do in this math basket. Another thing, this just happens to be my three-year-old's um, bead making kit. And this would be a great thing to give her kind of a pattern to do. Hey, let's make a bracelet. Let's do yellow, blue, yellow, and really get her to be the one that's finding the yellow, finding the blue, finding the yellow. You can also, again, make patterns. So this, a bead kit, lacing beads, and dealing with these kinds of manipulatives can help them start to group numbers together and count without having to go one, two. So she might see that and just know those are two. She might not have to go one, two, the more that you do these kinds of exercises. So, and obviously it gives them an option to with a dry erase marker if they want to, you know, some kids, this kind of stuff's a little frustrating, but they can totally write two and copy the word two. Some children are more motivated than others. Obviously we're not trying to force our kids to enjoy certain things. We're trying to find what is enjoyable to them and just encourage that more because again, they know that this is sort of an introduction. Oh my word, guys. Whoa. This is sort of like their intro to school in a way, even though it's not formal lessons. Because if your kids are like mine, they see me doing school with my older kids and they want to do it so bad. So if I start pushing them past their limits when it comes to things that are supposed to be fun and not supposed to be forceful, we're not going to have a very good idea of what school is. Your Kinderleben students will love to count and group and work with things found in nature. So we have a nature basket that we start at the beginning of every homeschool year. It always grows and grows. Um, don't ask me why we keep our nail clippers in here, but we do, and it works. Don't judge me. You can even ask them, let's count all these shells. How many shells do you think are in here? You know, how many rocks do you think are in here? And then you can count them together and see how far off they were. But I just think that counting could be really fun with different 
materials, not just like counting money or things like that. So get creative. And I know that your Kinderleben students will love to touch rocks because what kid doesn't bring them home every second of the day? This is called Pass the Pigs. Who knows what this is? This is just such a fun game to play with your kids. Basically, as you can see, these pigs have a dot on either side of them. So the goal is to roll the pigs and depending on the way they land, you get a certain amount of points. Certain ways that they might land, they might get zero points, and the kids start to become familiar with that. But this is just a fun game. You roll it together, you play with your kids, and I think this would be 10 points because it's five and five. So you're doing addition, and this is just like a really great game for them to play. I also had my kids gifted this kitten game by my brother, and this is awesome because there's a lot of matching patterns involved here. So as you can see, you'll pull out a card and it'll show you a specific pattern. And then you literally have those cats that you will then pull out to complete that pattern. So like I'm doing it very messy right now, but I'm just trying to, just trying to show you guys. This is something that could really keep your child busy. Ooh, this one's gonna be, ah, uh, but you get the idea really great game and again it works with patterns colors numbers it could um, be a really fun thing for you to play with your child again this is just an example of the little thingamajiggers you may have around your house that you're like uh that would work great these i call them tetris blocks i don't know what they are i don't remember where they came from i don't know why they're here but we can use them. We can do so much with these. We can build, ask the kids to build a pattern. You could say make a square. You can say uh, group all the purple, separate all the different colors, put the black with the black, the white with the white. You guys, what I mean, you can literally do it like this, put one in each, and then you can tell the kids, okay, put the purple with the, oops, put the purple with the purple, put the black with the black. Put the red with the red and pur purple, white, white. Purple, white, white. What comes next? Crumb? No, thank you. Purple, white, white. Purple, white, white. Purple, good job. Can you get the purple? And here's my last one, guys. Dice. <gasps> Wait a minute, I lied. That's not my last one. Okay, then for instance, you can use dice. You can roll a dice four, and then you could be like, okay, let's jump up and down four times. One, two, three, four, let's clap four times. One, two, three, four. For instance, you can use your puzzle. You can roll the dice and say, oh wait, you can roll the dice and say six. Can you give me the six? Then they go find the six. So you're using like two different ways to creatively get your goal across of getting them familiar with numbers, with playing, with enjoying math, and basically giving them a love for learning. The last inspiration for your math basket that I wanted to give you today is dominoes. Dominoes is a great game because your kids are counting those dots. They're counting the dots, they're matching, creating a pattern, all these things are all doable with dominoes. And I find that kids find it fun. I just suggest play it on a flat surface. You try to play this junk on a couch, it ain't gonna work. It's gonna frustrate you, it's gonna frustrate the kid and they're gonna run away. You can do it like this and say, let's set up four dominoes. Can you set up four? One, two, three, four. Good, now let's knock them down. Bam. You know, sometimes homeschooling with the older kids can get a little stressful. It can get a little exhausting. Have fun with your Kinderlebens, guys. Let this be your permission and your chance to get silly, to have fun, to really spend time with those children that maybe when you're working with your older kids, you feel like, oh, they're not really getting the attention that they deserve. Well, now's your chance. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that didn't overwhelm you. I just wanted to show you literally all the possibilities. There's just so much. You don't need all that. But even if you have three, you can literally put three of those things that I showed you into a basket and do them every day with your kid. I think that familiar, them familiarizing themselves with the numbers is really important. So if you can get some sort of wooden number like a puzzle or even cards that you could just go through daily with your child remember you can have one pack of cards but you can do like five different things with them you can play card games you can do matching games you can do patterns there's so much 
your disposal and I bet you, you already own it in your home. Thank you guys so much for watching. Put down in the comments any other ideas that worked for your math basket or even if an idea just popped up that you think would work, we would all appreciate it. Stay cool, calm, and collected. Give yourself grace, you guys, in the next video.